Welcome uh, to today's uh, session on the setting up of the PB840, the uh, which is a ICU the great uh, ventilator. All right. So the, before the, we start, make sure that the, the patient's the ventilator has already been uh, powered, uh, has been connected. And uh, there are also the two oxygen holes that you need uh, to connect. One is connected to the medical gas and the other is connected uh, to the oxygen the, uh, host. All right. And uh, I will now the demonstrate how to put in the different uh, components onto the uh, ventilator. The first is actually the, the expiratory the, um, filter. All right. There is a lever at the side. First of all, you need to lift this up, align the filter in so that it fits uh, smartly to, into the uh, container and then push the lever down and make sure that the, the filter is actually secure. The second component is actually the putting the um, inspiratory and aspiratory the limb which is connected uh, to a wide uh, connector. All right. One component will be the inspiratory the limb. There will usually the, be a, a bacterial filter that comes uh, together the, with the inspiratory limb. This will be applied to the, the inspiratory the inlet. The second uh, component will be the expiratory the, uh, inlet, which will be connected uh, to the valve. Make sure that the connections are tightly the, screwed in. The circuit usually comes uh, with a cap, which will leave it on the, at this moment. Here we'll do a demonstration for the short shelf uh, pass before we connect this mechanical ventilator uh, to the patient. Before we do this step, we must make sure that the inspiratory as well as the expiratory the circuits are connected. The power plug is uh, uh, plugged in as well as the gas supply is connected. For this uh, SST, we need to also be aware of the button that we need to actually press when the auction for SST uh, is shown in the circuit, which I will demonstrate uh, later. Before we proceed, remember to remove the cap from the, the circuit uh, wire limb before we power on the switch. After the welcome screen has been shown, you will have an option for you to perform the SST. So when that button is pressed, I will at the same time activate the test button at the site which I have shown to you earlier. It has now come to the SST setup screen. We need to select the type of circuit. For this particular demonstration, we are using a adult disposable circuit. Humidification type, which we will be using a heat moisture exchanger for this demonstration. Please note that in the bottom right hand corner, there are instructions that will guide you the step by step for the procedures that need to be done. Once we are selected the options, press the step. And then it will show you the SSD status with the various steps that will be done. Here it is asking us to connect the circuit with the inspiratory the filter and without the humidification system which we have already done so using the bacterial uh, filter. Press Accept. And it asks us to now block the Y, so reconnect the blue cap to the Y connector before you press Accept again. The whole process of the SST will take about 5 minutes uh, to complete. During this process, it will do uh, multiple steps to check the sensor, the circuit pressure, presence of any circuit lead, checking the health status of the expiratory the filter, as well as calibrating the circuit and resistance and complying to the last few stage. As the process uh, continues, you will hear a lot of noise as well as pressure change occurring from the ventilator. This is the uh, normal process, do not be alarmed. The next step would be to connect the humidification applicable. So for this demonstration, we are using a HME device. Connect the humidification filter onto the system and then press the set. The next step 
The instruction is to disconnect from the patient uh, port. This is where you disconnect the expiratory lymph from the expiratory uh, valve. Once that is done, press the set again. When that is completed, it will ask you to connect the expiratory lymph back to the expiratory valve. Make sure that it's not really the chitin. Press the set. So it's now instructing us to unlock the Y connector. So remove the blue cap, press the set. We're coming to the end. So now it's asking us to re-cap the Y connector. Once that is done, press the set. Okay, it's now asking us to remove the block Y. And you will see that the, they have said that the SSD testing is complete and you will also notice that for every the step there will be a past remark. When that is done, you are ready to proceed to connect the ventilator to the patient. Right, so just to note that for PV the 840, uh, before we start the patients uh, on the mechanical the ventilation, we need to make sure that the circuit is not connected uh, to the patient before we switch the ventilator on. So the power switch is actually located at the center of the unit. There will be a short uh, welcome screen as the ventilator the boots up. And at the beginning, you'll notice that uh, you'll notice that there will be a three the, uh, buttons for you to select. We have already done the SST, uh, assuming that this is a new patient that we are going to initiate the patient on. So we just press the new patient. So when this is connected, the first thing that it will tell you is to actually the key in the patient um, parameters. The important parameter is the patient's uh, weight. And this weight is actually the um, ideal the body the weight and this is based on the patient's uh, height as well as the gender assuming that this patient has an ideal body weight of 70 you can press the button and you can turn the dial to actually the select the value that you want you also note that once this is selected other options will come in and these are the options that actually um, allow you to select whether you're going to put this patient on invasive mechanical ventilation or the non-invasive mechanical ventilation. For the purpose of the demonstration the today, we are going to select the invasive uh, mechanical the ventilation. Depending on the software that comes with the machine that you have, you will see that there's various modes that you can actually the regulate how the ventilator delivers the breath. And um, for this particular machine, there's assist uh, control, uh, synchronized intermittent mandatory the ventilation or SINV. There's a spontaneous mode of ventilation the, which is a pressure support the ventilation and you can also the, do bi-level um, ventilation. So for this uh, demonstration to today we will be choosing the assist um, control and uh, you can actually the, regulate the breath either using volume control or the pressure the control and there's an additional options of um, volume the control plus which is the equivalent of uh, pressure regulated um, the volume control in other the ventilator uh, so for today's uh, session we'll focus on the assist control using the volume control the mode the next uh, button that they will ask you to determine is the trigger trigger is actually the um, how the ventilator will be able to detect that the patient is able to take a breath and uh, if the patient and this can be either through uh, um, changes in the flow or changes in the pressure all right for this particular setting we will actually uh, just choose a volume uh, through a flow the trigger once you have selected you just press a uh, confirm and uh, if you want to finalize your option you just need to press accept all right so now that we are actually the, at the uh, main the screen that you'll be interacting the with you'll notice that this is a touch base with uh, buttons at the bottom the bottom half of the buttons are actually mechanical the settings that you actually the input. The central the segments are actually the waveform that actually help you to actually the determine how well the patient is synchronizing with the ventilator. And it's important the section to focus on because it helps you to determine whether there's any issues with how the mechanical ventilator is working with the patient. The top half is actually the parameters as you recorded uh, 
by the ventilator on the patient's um, um, parameters. So it will actually the, give you the reading that is actually the measured uh, from the patient. Right. So the first thing that you want to do when you have uh, when you go into the mode is to actually set the patient's uh, parameter. So the parameters are setting is all done in the bottom half and uh, we will go from the left uh, to right to explain uh, what these uh, buttons mean. The first button is actually F or the frequency that will be the respiratory rate that you set uh, for the patient. If the patient has no respiratory drive at all, the machine will cycle uh, every the couple of seconds based on what you set at the Yes, your frequency. So if you set at 10, every six seconds, the machine will actually deliver that breath. How you select uh, the buttons, you can give a press, you will get highlighted. And once this is highlighted, you can turn the dial to change the parameters that you set. You also notice that there is a second the screen that actually will change uh, de um, depending on the settings that you're above. This gives us a uh, uh, representation of the inspiratory and expiratory the time all right so the, when you are setting a frequency of 10 your respiratory cycle will be about six seconds and the, the machine will actually tells you how much time is spent on inspiration versus how much time is spent on expiration and that will give you the inspiration to expiration the ratio the second setting that you want to the set would be what is your delivered breath because this is a volume control the ventilation. This means that we will tell the ventilator to actually target a certain um, pressure based on the flow. So how we usually set the tidal volume is based on the patient's ideal body weight. Remember earlier on that so you have set in a body weight based on the patient's ideal body weight. And uh, typically for initial the settings, we can actually target around the six mils to eight mils of ideal the body weight. Assuming that this patient is a 70 kilo the, uh, patient, a six mils per ideal body weight would be 420. So that would be a reasonable the initial setting the, to target. Right, so the, as usual, you press the button, you turn the dial and it will come up 450. And um, the next button, the next, uh, section is to flow. All right, this tells the ventilator how fast you want this tidal volume to be delivered. All right, and uh, for this particular the settings, I will just put at sixty. All right, you will notice that when we change either the tidal volume, frequency, and the flow, the I and E ratio will actually change. So let's say that you want to deliver the the breath in a very very slow the flow, say thirty you'll notice that it takes a long time for the ventilator to actually reach the target uh, uh, volume and the inspiratory the time is now the 1.52 and expiratory time is 4.4. Uh, that gives us an IE ratio of one is to close to three. But if you want to deliver the breath much uh, faster at the double the time, double the flow, you'll notice that the inspiratory time has actually uh, shortened now and that gives you a uh, lower the ratio of one is to six. All right. T um, time is actually the time spent in inspiration after the delivery of a breath. For patients uh, on volume control, typically the, we put that at zero. The RAM will tells you how the flow is actually the been delivered. Is it a constant? Which means that the, the ventilator will actually deliver that flow in a very, very constant rate or a decelerating mode which is more physiological to, um, for the patient which means that it's faster at the beginning and then it slows down right so typically we will put uh, the ram as a decelerating the waveform next would be the flow the trigger which tells the ventilator whether the, the patient is trying to initiate the breath and uh, it can be determined by either the pressure or uh, flow so here the higher the number the um, less easy is it for the, vent, uh, for the patient to actually generate uh, a breath before the ventilator can detect. The lower the flow, the higher is the sensitivity. So the ventilator will be very easy to actually pick up a patient's uh, effort. So a typical uh, flow trigger will put at either two or three. So the, we will just keep the setting as it is now. O2 is actually the oxygen that they're going to deliver to, to the patient. So it can go all the way up to 100% and as low as 
21%, which is atmospheric uh, um, air. So most of ventilated the patient, the lowest that we go down to would be about 30, all right, and can go all the way up to 100. Most of the time when you initiate a patient on mechanical ventilator, we will uh, put at 100 first, stabilize the patient, and then titrate according to the patient's uh, saturation. The last button that, that you need to set is actually the, the PEEP, which actually tells uh, the ventilator to hold the uh, pressure at the end of uh, expiration. This will help to prevent or uh, complete the de-recruitment uh, of the lung at the end of the breath. And it's very important uh, in patients uh, with hypoxemic uh, respiratory failure to prevent the lung from totally collapsing. So the, typically, the, we start off uh, with uh, at least a PEEP of five and then titrate according to um, the um, patient's uh, requirement. So once we have actually programmed in the parameters uh, for the patient, you'll notice that uh, in the top bar, you will have a set of parameters that actually is measured uh, from the patient. And I'll go through these uh, settings uh, in the greater the details. The first, the letter that you see is the C. C stands for controlled and is green. Basically, this means that the, the tidal the breath that is delivered the, to the patient is actually the initiated by the ventilator and not the machine. If this is a spontaneous uh, effort, you will see that um, it turns to A, which means that uh, this is an assisted uh, breath triggered by the patient and fully supported uh, by the ventilator. The next button is actually the peak airway the pressure. This tells you the total the airway pressure the, of the uh, patient. And um, this reflects uh, the degree of um, uh, airway, the trauma that the patient uh, may experience if it exceeds a certain the limit. The third button is actually the mean uh, airway pressure. And usual monitoring is not as important, but it tells you the average uh, pressure the, in the airway system. The next button is the, the uh, calculated uh, or measured the, uh, PEEP. Usually it's very, very close to the set PEEP that you have. But in certain the patients uh, with air trapping and auto peep, these numbers uh, could be much higher. And that potentially can give you the uh, warning that the patients may have uh, auto peep. The next um, reading is actually the inspiratory to expiratory the ratio. Earlier on, I have showed you how by manipulating the respiratory rate, volume, and the flow, it can actually change the ratio of the inspiration to expiration the cycle. And this is actually continuously the monitored and reflected in the reading the above. The next button is the measured uh, frequency. So the, in patients that is uh, completely the paralyzed, the patient um, trigger is actually entirely by the ventilator. So these, these um, numbers will be exactly the same as uh, the, what you have set. But in the patients who has the ability the, to trigger, every breath will be assisted uh, by the ventilator. Right, and this reading can potentially the go much higher than what you actually set. All right, so the patient has additional assisted the breath is supported uh, by the machine. So the uh, measured the frequency is higher than the, the set uh, frequency. The next uh, value is actually the measured the tidal the volume. All right, so this is very helpful in a patient uh, where we are actually monitoring the patient um, respiratory the mechanics. You have set the volume at 400 and there may be some uh, variability the, in the tidal volume so if you see that the significant the drop in the tidal volume that could signify a few the problems such as the leak or the air the trapping and uh, it can also be very very high in patients um, who are very dyssynchronous and may be doing the double the breaths the next is the minute the ventilation so the minute ventilation is a calculated the value by multiplying the frequency and the tidal the volume. That will give you the total amount of uh, tidal the um, volume that has been delivered uh, within a minute. All right? And in normal, the individual who is uh, at rest, the average um, um, minute of ventilation is anywhere between eight, uh, five to eight mils uh, per minute. Okay, once you have this set of values, the next thing that you want to actually set is the alarm the setting. The alarm setting will actually allow you to actually be notified when the patient uh, breathes uh, beyond or below a certain uh, safety the limit. 
And when you press that button, you will see that uh, there will be a pop-up uh, screen which allows you to set the alarm uh, for the peak airway pressure, frequency, the minute ventilation, and the tidal the volume. All right. So the, if you leave it at the um, uh, at the default the setting, you potentially can see a lot of uh, alarms which you do not want to be the notified of. So the peak airway pressure is an important uh, alarm for you to set. This will uh, alarm you. This will alert you when the airway the pressure exceeds uh, beyond a certain the safe limit. Typically, the, we put it at around uh, 40. You can actually change by pressing the uh, button and then uh, changing the dial to go up or go down. All right. The second button is actually the, for the frequency. By default, the, the upper limit of frequency is put at 100. But obviously, the, you want to be alerted when the patient is breathing um, beyond a certain limit and uh, for this particular patient the resting frequency is around the 12 so I may want to set it around let's say the 20 and uh, the machine will alert me when the breath goes uh, beyond that the next button is actually the minute uh, ventilation as I said the average minute ventilation for patient at rest is about 5 to 8 uh, liters per minute um, how I usually set the alarm is to have a buffer around 10% either above or below and that will alert, uh, alert us when the minute ventilation exceeds um, the limit that I set so, so sorry for that or goes uh, below the limit that I have set the next uh, button is actually the tidal uh, volume all right, so the, um, earlier on I've mentioned that a safe uh, starting point is about 6 mils to 8 mils per ideal the body weight. So the, if you want uh, the ventilator to alert you when the patient is breathing the beyond that, you can set the upper limit and the lower limit. Right. Once you have uh, satisfied with the settings that you have put in, just press accept and this will be locked in. And whenever the patient uh, is uh, breathing above or below what you have set, you will see an alarm uh, coming on at the top half, alerting you that this is a critical uh, error and you need to attend uh, to this patient uh, immediately. So one of the way that the mechanical the ventilator can assist you in actually monitor the patient's lung mechanics is by displaying the certain uh, waveform. In this particular the setup, we have the pressure the time waveform as well as the inspiratory the time the flow time the waveform. During the process of uh, managing this patient, you may be actually doing certain respiratory maneuvers to actually the calculate what is the patient's respiratory compliance and resistance. And very often, how we do this is by pressing the inspiratory the pause uh, button on the. Uh, bottom half of the, the mechanical the ventilator All right, when this is pressed the ventilator will actually the, hold the breath at the end of inspiration and the airway pressure may drop the slightly reflecting the true the plateau pressure of the system and once that is uh, done it will actually be reflected as the actual the measurement of the plateau the pressure as well as uh, calculate what is the patient uh, compliance uh, on the system. So next, we will actually demonstrate a patient that has very, very poor the lung uh, compliance. So you will now see that the peak airway pressure has suddenly the jump. And when that happens, you need to actually find out what is the cause. And again, you can actually the, do an inspiratory pause uh, maneuver. 
When that is done, you will notice that the airway pressure has dropped uh, slightly. And now you will see that compared to the earlier uh, uh, example, the plateau the pressure has suddenly uh, shot up and the lung compliance has actually uh, dropped. This will actually tell us that the patient's the respiratory lung the compliance has changed and you need to figure out what may be the potential the cause. So in this uh, example, we are trying to demonstrate another the phenomenon. You will notice that in the uh, waveform, the patient's uh, expiratory flow does not actually go back uh, to the baseline. This would suggest that this patient may have some form of uh, auto the PEEP or dynamic hyperinflation. In order for us to actually the, uh, measure what is actually the auto PEEP, you can do a uh, respiratory maneuver by pressing the aspiratory the pause uh, button. When you do that uh, during the inspiration, you will notice that the measured airway the pressure is actually much higher than the set um, PEEP and uh, they will also the calculate for you what is the intrinsic peak of this patient. When you see this uh, phenomenon, you will then need to actually the troubleshoot what could be the possible the cause be it an increase in the resistance of the circuit or the whether the, the patient is breathing too fast resulting in auto peeping. To we'll demonstrate another example of an alarm that uh, you may frequently um, encounter in the ICU. In this particular example, the patient is ventilated at a respiratory rate of 24 with a tidal volume of 400. And this is what is actually the reflected in the patient the measured the tidal the volume. Right. What has happened now is that uh, you will see that the ventilator have started uh, to give you a warning that the minute of ventilation has actually the drop and you'll see that there is a discrepancy between the measured tidal volume with the set uh, tidal volume. So this is a situation where you have a mismatch, a low uh, tidal volume that is mismatched with the set tidal volume and uh, you will need to examine this patient, the circuit as well as the ventilator to see where is the source of uh, drop in tidal volume.